Hi guys, this is Bonnie with Open Eyes of the Heart. Today I'm coming to you to share with you some information about the fallen angels. And this is part two. Have fallen angels fallen from heaven since the re rebellion? You probably think that they haven't that there have not been any fallen angels since the rebellion. But that's like saying that there is no longer sin in the world. Most people believe that the only fallen angels were the ones that fell with Satan. But I can tell you from firsthand experience that that is not true. There's very little information about fallen angels in the Bible or anywhere else for that matter except in the book of Enoch, where it talks extensively about um, the angels that fell to earth with Satan. Satan has tried to keep this the information under wraps about fallen angels. It's very secretive. It's, it's almost like the reptilians. And I did a video on reptilians a couple of weeks ago, and it's out there under our training session or training area if you're interested. But you know what? God brought us information, the entire team. He brought us all information about the fallen angel by way of a real life person who is possessed with a fallen angel. Fallen angels are not fictional characters, just fictional characters in novels or horror movies or video games. Fallen angels are very real, and they are real spiritual beings who are very dangerous and have motives and want to attack you during spiritual warfare that is constantly going on in the world. Their goal is to harm humans that they interact with, even though they may seem benevolent in order to uh, influence people. Fallen angels can hurt you in a variety of ways, from lying to you, to tempting you to sin. They cause mental anguish, like the depression, like depression and anxiety. Uh, they can cause physical illnesses or injuries, and they are experts at manipulation. I have been researching and documenting information on demons and evil spirits and spiritual warfare for several years by the leading of the Holy Spirit. In 1 John uh, 2, 27a, it says, but, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. So I've really stuck with that. I've allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me. Um, I don't look at books that the Holy Spirit doesn't want me to. I uh, listen to only a few people on YouTube. Um, I'm just, I just stay very focused on what it is that the Lord wants me to look at. So when I joined the team here at Open Eyes of the Heart, um, The Lord gave me a dream, and he also gave it to Jules. Now, Jules is the leader of the team, and the dream said that I was to be a teacher. And like I said, the Holy Spirit has been leading me to gather information for quite some time. So that that was what I felt like I was being drawn to, to teach, was about evil spirits and about uh, spiritual warfare and and that sort of thing. Um, I recently posted another video about the Leviathan spirit. And what I found was that the Leviathan spirit and the fallen angel are very similar. Um, I didn't anticipate that at all. They are both very high ranking in the the world of Satan's hierarchy. Um, I believe that they both fall right below Satan in the hierarchy, which make them a principality. 
And this means that they are both very powerful in the demonic world. And I've mentioned earlier that there's um, that I had an encounter with a fallen angel. And I'm going to share that experience with you. But again, when when I came across this fallen angel and I tried to research it, I could find nothing on the internet. There weren't even but maybe one or two videos on YouTube about it, but they didn't really give me the information I was looking for. So what I would like to do now is uh, ask the Lord to be with us. I'm going to say a little prayer here. Precious Lord, guide my words. Show the truth in this situation and give us the information and understanding needed so that if if and when we should come across a person that is possessed by a fallen angel, we would know what to do. And I pray, Lord, that you have given me enough information to help these people to know what they can do to protect themselves um, from, from the evil of a fallen angel. So, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So what has happened is that the Lord has come to me, the Holy Spirit has come to me and said, you need to learn this and then you must share it. Open Eyes of the Heart is a, is a prophetic office. And the definition of that is the office of a prophet is specifically ordained by God, directed by God's divine appointment, and a prophet that communicates whatever the Lord directs. Open eyes of the heart is a prophetic office, is one of God's prophetic offices. And if you've ever listened to Jules when he does his videos or anybody that's on the team, uh, very often we will talk about the prophetic office. And Jeremiah 1.7 says, but the, but the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And we follow this. Um, if the Lord speaks to us and tells us that we need to put something out there, we try to get it out as quickly as possible. If he's calling us to go somewhere and to go and talk with someone, um, we go. Uh, we don't ask any questions. We just do what the Lord tells us. So by by that, we are all in the pro prophetic office. And one of the things that we've been blessed with is that we've been able to have a lot of dreams. Jules has, over the last couple of years, has had over 1,100 dreams. And so um, I have my share of them. Michael has his share. We all have lots of dreams. So um, you're probably wondering how we knew that this person um, was actually, actually had a, a fallen angel. Like I said, we're a prophetic team and the God talks to us through our dreams and visions and Rima words. And a, a dream was received about a fallen angel. And this is something that all of us on the team became aware of. And so I will refer to what happened with the whole team. Uh, it didn't just affect me, it affected everyone that was here. Um, we were aware that uh, a person was coming to us and um, by the guidance of the Lord. And that person was sent to us and we knew that we were to help this person re re recover their salvation. And this person had been with us only one day when one of the team members received a dream from God. And the dream told us that this individual was possessed by a fallen angel. My question was, what? I've never seen any documentation on a fallen angel. I don't know anything about fallen angels. So I started just double-checking everything I had on my computer, all the files I've saved, which have 
I have hundreds of files out there and I couldn't find anything. So I went to the internet and I looked and you know what? I couldn't find anything there either. Um, just a, a couple of small documents here and there and, and really no real substance within any of the documents. So the Lord said, um, learn about it and then share it. And that's what I'm hoping to do today is to share the some of the things that have happened to us as a team and to me individually uh, while this person was with us. First thing we found out is they are extreme liars and manipulators. And they're very good at it. They're able to twist what they what they said or what people said to them and, and so that it meets their needs. Uh, they don't care about anybody else except themselves. And um, while it's true that all evil spirits are liars, fallen angels seem to specialize in it. They twist the truth and they get into the minds of their victims. And quite often their victims don't even realize what's going on. It's, it's, and they twist their intentions and the conversations and someone can tell them something and, and they hear something totally different. I don't know if you remember or if you've ever played this where Somebody will whisper something in your ear and then you whispered it to the next person and on down the line and then it comes back and it and the last person tells what they heard, what was whispered in their ear. That's kind of what happens with a fallen angel. They always are the, the one that's at the end and it's totally different than what it started out to be. They miss uh misinterpret what is said um the, uh, again they'll twist it and make it fit whatever it is they're they're wanting and anything positive they'll twist as well especially if it's positive about someone else because um any kind of correction is twisted and what i mean by that is you will you may say something to them about a correction for them and they want to argue with you about it and twist it and make it sound like they're okay and they're doing the right thing and what happens is the person that brings that correction ends up being their enemy ends up being a target for all of their um, lies and manipulation and this caused a lot of disunity in our team. And again, to, to get things to go their own way, they will manipulate. And I have to tell you guys, this was, uh, this started almost immediately when this person came to us. And it took us a while to really grasp what, what, what was going on. And so as I go through this, I hope you can can see what was going on with all of us. Um, this person will only tell you half, half truths because they think you don't need to know everything. Well, I was the, the first one that came to her with a correction. And like this, this little screen here says, I was the target of the fallen angel. If anything was going to go wrong, she would pick on me and argue with me and fight with me and um, belittle me. So, um, but I thank the Lord that I became aware of this very early on. Uh, I was the one that spent the majority of the time with her. And it did seem to take the team a little bit longer to have their eyes open. But again, they weren't with her as much as I was. We fit, quickly found out that um, this individual loved to argue. 
and you can't argue with a fallen angel. You will always end up with the person yelling at you, and they are always right, and they always have to have the last word. One time I tried to get the last word. Didn't matter what was going on. I wanted to have the last word because I, I had seen this. I had figured this out. And uh, I think it went on for about 20 minutes where I would say something and the fallen angel would say something and I would say something and the fallen angel would say something. I finally just, uh, lack of better words, I just finally gave up. <laughs> And um, and let the fallen angel have the last word, which is what they wanted. Some of the other things that can happen, the, the fallen angel can get into your mind and cause depression and oppression. And uh, this is very similar to having a stronghold. And you also have a feeling of worth, worthlessness. And this can bring on the spirit of heaviness. I did do um, a brief video on this uh, a few days ago on March 4th, or, yeah, March 4th of 23. I posted a video called uh, Chinese Soldiers Defeated. And this goes into the discussion on the spirit of heaviness into detail if you're interested in looking at that. The spirit of heaviness is um, uh, in Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3, it talks about the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto, unto the, them the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. When I had the spirit of heaviness on me, I was not possessed by it. I was being oppressed by it. Um, uh, this is what, how I felt. Like I, I, somebody grabbed my hand and pulled me up out of this deep, this, this, abyss that I'm in, um, and by reading the scriptures that the Lord took me to, I was able to remedy the spirit of heaviness that was on me. The human soul was not made to live in darkness and, with, and will wither in its own, in its continued presence. I'm sorry. So what, what that means is if you stay in the darkness, it, you're going to wither up. So you need to turn on the light. And that's what the spirit of heaviness is. It's, it's a darkness that envelops you. You need to turn on that light to be set free and put on the garment of praise to remove yourself from the spirit of heaviness. There was a lot of deception because of the lying we never knew if, if the fallen angel was telling us the truth. I had spent the majority of my time with the fallen angel, and I could tell who was in control. And by that, I mean there was a, an extreme difference between the personality of the fallen angel and the personality of the person. And you have to remember that a person that is possessed by a fallen angel, um, the fallen angel will be a different person. The way I described it was that it was like a Jekyll and Hyde personality. So 
because I was around the fallen angel so much more than the other people on the team, I was able to know whether it was the fallen angel or whether it was the person that was in control. The fallen angel was very defiant. Um, wanted nothing to do with following the rules. Uh, we did have rules in place. Um, but I just talked verbally and explained the rules. And when the rules were broken, the fallen angel would say that I was forgetting, that I changed my mind, that that was not what I had said. Um, so I put it all in writing. And even after that, I was still told I was losing my memory, that I was forgetting things that I had said. And uh, so I, I started praying about it, asking the Lord, am I losing my memory? Am I forgetting things? And it's, you know, when this fallen angel came to us, that was the only time I've ever heard that from anyone. So I was, I was at the point where I was beginning to think that Maybe I was losing my memory. But again, that was the manipulation of the fallen angel to get me off off my even keel. And the fallen angel loved to argue and was very verbally abusive. Uh, trying to have a conversation, uh, the fallen angel would end up in an argument with me and they are very articulate and they use very cutting and evil words um they they will even at times um use bible verses and attack you with them so this caused a lot of strife and disunity within the team it was pitting the team members against each other that's what the fallen angel was doing and um, and just she, they just continued to lie. I believe that the fallen angel was actually trying to destroy the team. Because the leading way that a fallen angel operates is through pride, you'll see them rear up their ugly heads and when they when fault it comes to them if you find them doing something incorrectly and you bring it to their attention um they just think they cannot do anything wrong and there's and they, they will take whatever happened and twist it and try to put the blame on someone else so instead of trying to be humble like most people would do and fix the situation uh, and admitting that they were wrong, that's something they won't do. Uh, the fallen angel instead turns and blames other people. And during this process, um, they will become very angry. And, uh, and they'll build up a wall and they'll uh, just, no blame can enter into them. Here are some of the other characteristics of a fallen angel they are very self-righteous very self-righteous they are arrogant they're controlling i'll let you just look through this list um, some of the major things that we saw were the self-righteousness and the controlling always wanting to be right uh, the need to have the last word on everything they were very critical and judgmental um, they dishonored authority in other words we have we have a team lead and his name is jules you probably all know who he is uh she did not think he had authorization to um tell the fallen angel what to do or the person either one and she would fight him Other items, uh, they think they know everything. They're very rebellious, opinionated, 
very secretive, didn't want anybody to know what was really going on with them. And they seemed to always have other demons within them. Uh, the one that I was most aware of was the demon of gluttony. Uh, and they're very lazy people. What was seen was that the fallen angel was in control of the human the majority of the time. Uh, probably 95% of the time the fallen angel was in control. And if, the, if we could see that this person was humble, we would know, know that the person was in control and was trying to listen to God and trying to follow what God was telling this person. But if the fallen angel was in control, um, there was very, very little that we as a group could do to help the fallen angel. And when the fallen angel was in control, I personally felt like I was under a spiritual battle day and night. Um, like I told you back in the beginning, I was the target. So this fallen angel is in our midst and just was after me all the time. Just was always there. I was always under attack. There were times when other team members were under attack as well, but the majority of the time it was, was the fallen angel was after me. I was the target. And I think I was the target because of my love for Jesus. I, like I said, I spent a lot of time with the fallen angel. And my love of Jesus drove her, drove the fallen angel crazy. And I have a wonderful walk with the Lord today. Some of the other things are that uh, the fallen angel has an evil tongue. They can say words to you that are very cunning and deceitful. And uh, I'm telling you, you don't want to get into an argument with them because you won't win. Um, and all of this combined shows us how manipulative the fallen angels can be. Fallen angel is higher ranking than a demon, and I could feel that. I could feel the strength of the fallen angel. And I also had a knowing, and I, I had read, um, and one of the very few things that I found on the internet, that as children of God, we should not attempt to deliver someone from a fallen angel without approval from the Lord first. And like I said, this is the only piece of substance I found about fallen angels on the internet. Whether or not this is true, I can't really answer. Um, I can tell you that this fallen angel did not want to come out and did not come out. Did not and would not come out. I eventually was given a knowing by the Lord that the fallen angel's name was Diana, or is Diana. And I was given further knowledge that Diana was a bride of Satan. I found this picture on the internet. It's actually of an angel. Um, and just take a good look at it and try to keep it in your mind. One night I had a dream. 
and Diana was in front of me. And she came in the form of a star. And the previous picture that I showed was very similar to what she looked like in this dream. And in this dream, I also saw Satan. And he was on to the right of Diana, but on my left. And he was back a little bit farther. Just I think he was just there more for support. I don't know. Anyways, um, Diana reached into my chest with her hand, and she squeezed my heart. And I had excruciating pain on the right side of my body. I was hurt in the spiritual realm, but I felt it in the natural realm. And then I saw Satan sitting over there and he was just laughing. When the dream ended, I prayed about it and I asked the Lord, why? What happened? What's going on? You know, um, was not anything I would have ever anticipated in a dream. And he told me I needed to read the book of Job. Well, in the book of Job, and I'm sure you're all familiar with it, Satan was allowed to test Job. And I was being tested. I was being sifted. And um, I didn't feel well for a, a few days, several days. But I eventually got back on my feet. It was an experience that I don't want to go through again. I will tell you that. And this experience was very minor compared to what Job went through. And I praise the Lord that I made it through. Um, but it also opened my eyes to what can happen in the spiritual realm. This is very much a picture or a depiction of what I would see uh, Diana when she was actually in her angel form. Um, you'll see this person is very bound, bound by Satan. Um, and like I said, she was a bride of Satan. She was very powerful. So gives you kind of an idea of what I was seeing when the fallen angel was around. We had a lot of incidents and there was a lot of team manip manipulation, um, playing one person against the other and um, causing strife. And there were attacks, uh, attacks on team members other than just myself. Um, one person was attacked via text messaging for about four hours one day. Uh, the fallen angel swore, said really vile things, um, just was on the warpath, I guess. Um, uh, just so many things happened while the fallen angel was here. And sh the fallen angel rebuked the team leadership. Um, and again, there was just a, a ton of deception. Uh, <clears throat> Fortunately, there are several ways that you can protect yourself against a fallen angel and against becoming their prey. Here's um, how to protect yourself from a fallen angel. You need to realize that this is a spiritual war. It's a spiritual battle. I personally, um, every morning and every night before I would go to bed, I would put on the armor of God. I would suit up. I would 
um, say all kinds of verses and just to protect myself from the evil that was around. You need to realize that it's a, uh, it is a spiritual battle. And the Bible says it's important to remember that people are part of a spiritual battle every day in this fallen world. In which the fallen angels who aren't re usually visible, ne nevertheless, influence human lives. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the darkness of this world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is Ephesians 6.12. Be careful when you're contacting angels on your own. This is not recommended. You, you should be going through the Lord for everything the Lord, the Holy Spirit, Father God, you should not be trying to contact an angel. The Bible advises people to be very careful when they are contacting angels on their own rather than waiting for God to bring the angels into their lives according to his will. If you contact angels yourself, you can't choose the angel that's going to respond. A fallen angel may use your decision to reach out to angels rather than directly to God as an opportunity to man manipulate you while disguised as a holy angel. 2 Corinthians 11.14 of the Bible says that Satan, who leads the fallen angels, masquerades as an angel of light, and the angels who serve him masquerade as servants of righteousness. Beware of false messages. The Bible cautions the fallen angels, cautions that the fallen angels may speak as false prophets, and say, and says in Jeremiah twenty three sixteen that false prophets speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. And Satan, whom the fallen angels follow, is a liar and the father of lies, according to John 8, 44 of the Bible. Test the messages that the Lord gives you. Don't just accept a message. Oh my gosh. You may receive, you may receive it from an angel. As, uh, whew, excuse me. In 1 John 4, 1, it says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God, because many of these false prophets have gone out into the world. The acid test of whether or not an angel is truly communicating a message from God is that the angel has to say what the angel has to say about the, um, Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 2, this is how to recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is from God. I'll have more on this a little bit later. You need to find wisdom through a close relationship with God. The Bible says that it is important important for people to stay closely connected to God since the, wis since the wisdom that comes from a close relationship with God will empower people to discern whether the angels they encounter are faithful angels or are fallen angels. Proverbs 9.10 declares, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Choose to follow where God leads. Finally, it's important to intentionally base your daily decision on the values that reflect what God says matters most. Choose to do what's right as God leads you, whether you can, whenever you can. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. When you're given a choice 
make sure that you do what it is the Lord is asking you to do or telling you to do. This is crucial because fallen angels are constantly tempting you to sin, to try to pull you away from God. There was a psychiatrist that his name is M. Scott Peck, and he explores the real but rare phenomenon of demon possession of human beings in the book called Glimpses of the Devil. And he concludes, possession is not an accident. In becoming possessed, the victim must, at least in some way, co cooperate with or sell out to the devil. And this is so true. You, there is something that you have to do as a human that would open a door that would allow the devil in. And he also wrote another book. It's called um, People of the Lie. It's about evil. And he says that um, that the way to be free of bondage is, to evil is to submit to God and his goodness. There are two states of being, submission to God and goodness, or the refusal to submit to anything beyond one's own will, which refusal automatically enslaves one to the forces of evil. We must ultimately belong to either God or the devil. I say belong to God. This is another depiction of a, a fallen angel. What to do? You need to test the spirits. And this is something that, these are things that I shared with the team so that we could all get on the same page and all try to understand how how to interact with this, this fallen angel, this person, this whatever, whoever it was at the time. Did Jesus come in the flesh? This is from 1 John 4, 1 through 3. And we had to use that a lot. Especially, not so much me, but I did use it a lot. But the others, because they weren't as adept at um, figuring out whether it was the fallen angel in control or the person. Uh, what has to happen when you ask this question, did Jesus come in the flesh? You should get a response of yes. But the fallen angel because the fallen angel could not answer that question, yes, would say, Jesus came in the flesh and died on the cross and rose the third day. That told me that the fallen angel was in control. And you may get that too if you're dealing with a fallen angel. They will not be able to answer that question with a yes. And I have to elaborate on that a little bit because... Um, well, let me get to that in a little bit here. The next one is make sure you put on your armor every day, every day, every day. Like I said, I was putting it on twice a day, and I usually do that now, even now. Um, that the the fallen angel has is not around us anymore, but I still do that usually twice a day just to make sure I'm covered, just to make sure that I'm not being attacked. And we are, to like I said, we are told to test the spirits in 1 John 4, 2 to 3. The next thing is, this is very critical, especially when you're working with uh, a fallen angel, which is a principality which is above a demon in, in the hierarchy of um, Satan's. Do not say, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. 
you must say, the Lord rebuke you. I as a human, unless, unless Father God gives me the authority and the approval to try to rebuke this fallen angel, I should not be doing that. I should be rebuking it in, uh, I should say, the Lord rebuke you. Uh, in Jude 1, 9, uh, it says, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accu accu accusation, excuse me, but says, the Lord rebuke thee. You want to use the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you is much more powerful. And I'll go into a little bit more of that in a minute. Um, and the next thing, and this is probably something that you've not heard of before, but I will tell you where to get additional information on it. It's called remitting sins and breaking curses. You probably heard of breaking curses, but not the remit sin, because this was very new to everyone here on the team. Um, I had a, a situation uh, um, probably three years ago now uh, where I opened an email and I felt evil come out of it in my computer. I felt evil all around me when I opened that email. And I said, Lord, what is this? What is going on? And um, it was probably a, a month later, he brought me to this Sarah Tennessee on YouTube. And I watched her video called Remission, uh, yeah, Remission of Sin. It was one of those things that the Holy Spirit led me to. Just go out there and watch it. Watch it. And the John 20, 23 is the basis for this video. And it's whose so ever sin do you remit? They are remitted unto them. And whose so ever sin do you retain? They are retained. And what Sarah explains is that if somebody sends a sin against you, you need to grab that sin and remit it and send it right back to them, just like you do with curses. You break curses, but with the sins, you have to send it back. You have to grasp it and send it back. So on a daily basis, what I say is I remit all sins against me and send it back to the sender sevenfold. So I'm increasing whatever they sent against me. I'm increasing it and sending it back. And I do that in the name of Jesus. And like I said, Sarah Tennessee on YouTube, she only has three videos out there. And this was the very first one she did. And like I said, it was a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago now. But it allowed me to understand what happened when I opened that email. And all this evil came out of it. It's like, how did that, where did that come from? So anyways, it has helped the entire team um, to know that you need to be remitting those sins back to the sender. Whether you know about them or not, do it every day. There are a couple more things I want to address before I uh, go through the conclusion here. One of the things is that you must remember that the demons and the fallen angels are totally separate entities from the person. And it's when you're trying to help these, these people that have the demons or the fallen angel, you need to be able to separate those two. And by doing all the things that we've just talked about, uh, it will also help the person that is being uh, possessed by the fallen angel. And one of the things I wanted to warn everyone about, fallen angels are, are they're very sharp. They're very intelligent. Um, we had 
a meeting where I went over all of these things here, where I talked about First John and how to test the spirits and putting on your armor and making sure you test the spirits and using the Lord rebuke you instead of I rebuke you and the remission of sin and uh, the breaking of the curses on a daily basis. So we were, we were meeting about that and the person that had the fallen angel was in that meeting. The fallen angel realized what we were doing when we were trying to test the spirit. And what happened was shortly after this meeting, when we would try to test the spirit, fallen angel would say yes. And my, what I'm thinking happened was the fallen angel figured out something that could be, this is Diana, that she could say to herself that would cause her to be able to say yes to the answer of that question. So if we were to say, did Jesus come in the flesh? She's immediately asking herself a question that she can answer yes to. So what I'm saying is don't let the fallen angel know that you know that you have these tactics that you can use um, to help you to understand or to see the fallen angel. Because if you can't test the spirit, if they know how to answer yes to that question, you're in trouble. And I, I'm, that's just something that we learned. Um, and just keep in mind, you know, the, the fallen angels are still with us today. They are very powerful. They're very high-ranking entities in the hierarchy of Satan. Um, if you come across a person that has a fallen angel get God on your side he's going to lead you and show you what you need to do to help this person there are people out there today can uh, deliver do deliverance of demons and evil spirits and that sort of thing but when it comes to the fallen angels and principalities and and the higher powers within Satan's organization, you really need to be working with God on that and, and um, help, having him help you and having him guide you. And I want to thank you and may God bless you in everything that you do and praise the Lord in Jesus' name.